Hey guys, it's time for my June wrap up and I'm going to admit that I am very, very disappointed with myself because I didn't end up reading half the books that I planned on reading. Some of that wasn't my fault, but the majority of it was. And it all started with finishing Lord of Shadows. This book didn't put me in a reading slump. I was still reading, but I was reading on fan fiction. And I think that was because this was going to put me in a reading hangover. I could feel it coming on. So I was like, how about I just get on fan fiction and read something really happy to get myself over the ending of this book. And I ended up reading on fan fiction for like a full week, two weeks, something. I lost count. I think it was about two weeks actually that I just read on fan fiction and nothing else. I regret it, but I don't regret it because I read a lot of good stories. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't read the deleted scene in this because I was like, if I read the deleted scene, I am going to want to reread the series or start over at the Mortal Instruments and read from there again. And it's like, you know what, I'm better off just leaving that deleted scene for another time. And after this two weeks of reading fan fiction, my aunt was having breathing problems, so we ended up taking her to the ER, and it was her bronchial tubes, they were swollen, and that's how air gets into your lungs, apparently. Apparently it was caused by asthma, we didn't know she even had asthma, at least I didn't. So we ended up spending a day in the ER and then a day at the hospital and I got like, no, I barely got sleep, let alone any reading done. But being in the hospital those two days kind of kicked me out of reading fan fiction, thank goodness. And I finally picked up an actual book. Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Arbitali. I think I said her name right. This book, I mean, it was a really, really quick read and it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I was actually expecting something a lot more depressing. This book, of course, follows our main character, Simon, as he deals with a lot of drama. And I'm not just talking about family drama and his drama club. I'm talking about him having a secret correspondence with a boy named Blue, who he's slowly falling in love with, even though he really doesn't know much about the boy because the boy wants to keep their identity a secret. And these correspondence leads to him being blackmailed by a classmate. Something that I love but found frustrating about this book is the fact that in the contemporaries that I've read so far, if there's a secret crush or just someone who's being a hindrance to you, and their identity is unknown, then that person is kind of treated as a side character where you do get to know more about them and you see them a lot, but they're also kind of pushed to the side as well. And there's normally a lot of them so that, you know, you really can't guess who this person is. But in this book, nope. The true identity of Blue, that boy doesn't really come into the story much at all. And if he's in the story, it's normally just because he's being mentioned as a side thought. I'm gonna be honest, I never even contemplated the fact that the guy who was Blue could be Blue. And that's really the thing that frustrated me. It's when there's a secret crush or a secret villain, normally I'm very good at picking out who in the story is that person? In this one, just threw me up for a loop and I had no clue. I also wish we had gotten to know more about Blue outside of the emails because I know he's like in the last few chapters very prominently, but it still doesn't feel like we really get to know him. I would actually love to read a sequel about this with, um, I guess another set of main characters, but with Simon and Blue being like, very prominent throughout the story so you can learn more about their relationship. As for my rating for this book, I had to give it a 4 out of 5 stars. And I actually cannot wait to read more of Becky Arbitali. I completely forgot to give you guys my rating for Lord of Shadows. This book got a 5 out of 5 stars. After finishing Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, it was very, very close to the end of the month. Like, I only had like a week left, and I was like, I want to read something that is going to be very quick and is very small. That way, you know, I at least feel somewhat accomplished that I've read three full books. So, I decided to pick up Unscripted Joe Spryard, and I'm pretty sure I said her name wrong. And I'm not even going to even attempt to say the author's name, because I know I'm going to butcher that. 
The author of this book is actually a teacher for Hollywood actors. Which my main reason for picking up this book is just because I wanted to read another book that was about actors. But everything in here was just so different than what I've read and also very realistic. I don't mean that as realistic as all contemporaries are. But I mean realistic as in this is stuff I've read before on acting sites and have seen on documentaries and it's just actual real stuff. It's not sugarcoating anything. It's all very down to earth and harshly realistic. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars and that was mainly because the main character is 12 years old and it was really hard for me to picture a 12 year old going through all of the crap that she's going through while also trying to please everybody. I think this book is perfect for anyone who is looking to learn more about acting whether it's simply just to learn more or if you want to be an actor someday yourself. Last but not least, I read about a hundred and some odd pages of The Eye of Minds by James Ashner. I obviously can't say much about this book. When I went into it, I knew that it was set in a virtual world and that the main character was a hacker, but just the first hundred some odd pages surprised the heck out of me because this took virtual reality to a level that I wasn't expecting. I was expecting them just to wear like headpieces or something and be fully aware of the outside world and not what happened at all. And then I was also expecting the main character when they said he was a hacker that he since he was the main character he had to be like this amazing hacker that could do stuff that no one else could do. Again, not the case, which is actually very nice. The fact that the main character, even though he's a hacker and they're needing his help, it's like he's not the only one they need help from and he's no better than the next guy, really. At least not that I've seen so far. I actually think that this is going to be a book series that I will just fly right through. I'm really, really hoping it is because I'm loving the book so far. Well, that is my June wrap up. And you know, if you want to be honest, Lord of Shadows should count as two books. I really want to, mainly to make myself feel better for only reading three books this month and two of them were very, very short contemporaries, but you know, I'll deal, maybe. Since I only read three books this month, that kind of puts me two, two and a half books behind on my Goodreads reading challenge for the year of reading 70 books. So I'm hoping I actually get a lot of reading done in July, which should happen because the Booktubeathon is next month. You guys should let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books or you want to read any of these books and your unspoilery thoughts about them. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!